In video games, there are tons and tons of moves, different things you can do to outsmart, outwit, or just beat down an enemy. And some are kind of dumb. And even though some are kind of dumb, they're also kind of awesome. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 dumb but cool moves in video games. Starting out with number 10, Dying Light 1 and 2's Dropkick. Now this game has a primary focus on melee combat, and that makes dealing with zombies a challenge, at least until you start unlocking some powerful abilities to take them down. In terms of basic usefulness, few other abilities match the simple drop kick. You jump in the air, kick with both feet, and any zombie you connect with goes flying. If there's anything else around, they get knocked back too. It's kind of the perfect move for crowd control, or when you just want to send zombies flying off buildings, cause like, genuinely look at it, it is incredibly satisfying to pull off. The thing is, this move is ridiculous. You'd think in a zombie apocalypse, the most important thing would be defending yourself, not just literally throwing yourself at the flesh-eating monsters like a projectile. Uh, there's a reason why people aren't out pulling drop kicks all the time in MMA fights or anything. It's a high-risk maneuver, even in those situations where no one is trying to eat your flesh. Ignoring the real-life implications, the move itself is just totally insane. The height you can pull this thing off from is just crazy. You can basically jump off a skyscraper and drop kick a zombie on the way down and suddenly you're fine. Basically nothing about this move makes any sense in either of the Dying Light games, but it's so fun to use it just doesn't matter. At number 9, Yakuza Like a Dragon, the essence of orbital laser. The seventh installment of the long-running Yakuza series is a weird one. It's got a new protagonist, new city to explore, and oh yeah, it's a turn-based RPG now. Now, the Yakuza games basically exist in the real world, more or less. Uh, mostly, they're just about fighting rival crime organizations and getting caught up in crazy schemes, but they basically exist within I, I, some kind of recognizable reality. Uh, that is not always the case, though. Sometimes things get weird. In fact, they tend to. But at least in terms of attacks, things generally stay ground level. But this is this is this is not so much with Yakuza 7. Uh, if you manage to get top rank in the business management minigame, then you unlock this ability, the essence of orbital laser, which is exactly what it sounds like. You uh, get into a fight with a random assortment of street thugs as you wander Yokohama, and instead of fighting fair, you can summon a space laser to do your dirty work for you. This move is as over the top as a Final Fantasy summon, and and is literally Dr. Evil's plan, I think in the second one. The fact this game is basically set in the real world makes that insane. Like, Final Fantasy summons are all strange in their own way, and obviously Dr. Evil is strange. But neither of those things represents itself as existing in a more or less real world. And that makes this attack just seem dumber and even more insane. <laughs> But there's no denying that the orbital laser isn't cool. It just, it's so dumb to see it deployed in a normally low stakes world like that of the Yakuza franchise. And number eight is Devil May Cry 5's Dr. Foss. The DMC series is filled with bizarre weapons, but in my opinion, the dumbest and also most amazing has gotta be this one. It's a hat that Dante uses as a weapon while pulling silly Michael Jackson poses. There's not much about this thing that isn't laughable, and what's even more impressive is how overpowered it can be. Now, the main thing that makes it so incredibly good is that you can earn tons of red orbs if you use it right. The set hat ability has Dante throwing the hat at an enemy, which literally puts the hat on them. From there, any damage you inflict on the enemy makes them drop extra red orbs. But if you get hit while it's in effect, you lose them, so there's a risk reward mechanic to you using it. Like every weapon in Devil May Cry 5, there's a lot of mechanics to it, even on top of everything we've already explained. Uh, but it's a cool as hell weapon with a lot going on. It just so happens it's also a white cowboy hat that you do a bunch of silly 80s music video dance moves when you put it on for some reason. And number seven is Resident Evil 4 uh, suplexing the zombies. One move we uh, hope to and expect to see again in the upcoming Resident Evil 4 remake. It's dumb, but it's, uh, it is iconic. 
When you're playing as Leon, there's a few different context moves you can perform on the Ganados. If you stun them normally, then you can follow up with a jump kick that sends enemies that are close to you right onto their ass. It's a great move for crowd control and it looks cool to boot. Now, if you manage to cause a Ganado to fall to their knees, usually by shooting them in the foot, you can do something a little different. Leon grabs them and gives them a full-blown suplex. Like, he's such a badass that he is doing wrestling moves on zombies and not even any old suplex. Like, the Japanese manual describes it as a belly-to-belly -belly suplex, uh, uh, accurate uh, as its usage in actual wrestling. It's an actual wrestling move. Now, the very idea of using wrestling moves in enemies in a horror game is nuts, but Resident Evil 4 makes it work. In a Resident Evil game where you're fighting these, like, parasite zombies in a creepy-as-hell Spanish village slash castle, uh, the wrestling move stands out, let's say, as both very dumb and very cool. And number six, we're talking about Super Smash Brothers, uh, and not just anything in it, but Snake's Taunt. Snake's standard taunt ability in Smash Bros. is incredibly dumb. It just makes it so he hides in a cardboard box until you stop. It's slow. It, it does no nothing at all to actually hide you from enemies, uh, and it essentially t serves no purpose. I mean, there's one thing it can do. When Snake discards the box, it's actually considered a projectile, so if anyone is hit by the box, they'll take damage. It's not a lot or anything. It's a cardboard cardboard box. But if you really want to show some ultimate disrespect, it's the move to use. Knock them off to the side of the map, and when they try to jump onto a ledge, just drop a cardboard box on their head. It looks goofy, but it's effective. It's also one of the very few taunts that can do any damage in these games, even if only a little. And compared to Luigi's little kick taunt, there's something particularly goofy about this. I mean, you're beating somebody with a cardboard box, which looks about as flimsy as it is, but somehow it has the force to knock someone mid-jump back down into the abyss. Honestly, and this isn't even exclusive to Smash Bros, the basic concept of a super badass like Solid Snake sneaking around in a literal box is funny enough, but the fact you can make it a weapon in these games makes it even dumber and it is cool and satisfying as hell when you manage to beat somebody down by dropping a cardboard box on them and number five is Hulk Ultimate Destruction, the shield grind. Yeah, Breath of the Wild has a shield grind as well, but where, well, yeah, it does have that specific function, and it's pretty cool. There's a, something a lot goofier when a superhero like the Hulk does it. One of the coolest things about Ultimate Destruction are these weaponization moves that let you take objects and turn them into weapons. Like, you can smash cars and make brass knuckles out of them, flatten a truck to make a shield. The shield's mostly good for blocking projectiles, but if you buy the shield grind skill, you can actually ride it around like a snowboard. Uh, it's not particularly particularly useful. And even with the added ability to send your board flying at enemies, it's not very effective most of the time. It's slow and too situational to really be used, but being able to grind around as the Hulk is really fun, and I don't even care that it's effectively useless in practice. And number four is Dead Rising at uh, so many moves. One of the cooler features of the original Dead Rising was all the special moves you'd learn as you leveled up. Uh, later games kept the system, but mostly removed the goofier or more useless abilities, which is a shame because there's some really hilarious stuff you could do here. I honestly couldn't keep it to just one, though. There's so many dumbass moves you can pull off in this game. They're all hilarious. Most of the moves you get are actually functional at the start, but the closer you get to max level, the goofier they get. Stuff like the double lariat, where Frank spins around and plays to hit zombies, or the Resident Evil-style suplex, or the giant swing, or Frank hilariously grabs a zombie and swings it around by the legs. One of the more outlandish abilities is the disembowel move where you literally ram your fist into a zombie's stomach and yank out their guts like a lunatic. It's gnarly as hell and completely insane, but it is actually effective. Uh, the setting and character are really what makes it especially dumb, though. The guy you're playing as isn't like a super soldier or anything. He's kind of a schlubby looking dude with a camera, so seeing him whip out these Street Fighter moves in The Walking Dead, it looks ridiculous. Like, wrestling moves. I guess Capcom just really loves doing wrestling moves on zombies for whatever reason. It's hilarious, so I'm not complaining. It's just another one of those things where it's so dumb and it makes no sense, but it's cool as hell in spite of it. And number three, in Dragon Ball Fighters, that is Dragon Ball Fighter Z, the body change. If you've ever seen Dragon Ball Z, you know what we're talking about. When Goku fights Captain Ginyu, he pulls out a special move where he manages to swap bodies with Goku for a while.
This move has been perfectly replicated in Fighter Z and works exactly like you'd expect. It swaps control between you and your opponent. There's even an additional attack that you can perform where Ginyu hurts himself before attempting the attack, which is pretty cool. The fact this whole thing has been replicated for a fighting game is really cool, but the actual function of the attacks vary situational, and I'll probably end up getting it killed, honestly. Not just because playing as Ginyu is difficult in the first place, but because the super can be hard to land even if you try it. So trying to use this move at all is usually dumb because you're just punished for it, but if you pull it off, it is a really impressive feat, and especially if you win the match based off it. At number two is Final Fantasy VIII's Dog Cannon. When you think of special abilities in Final Fantasy games, most people remember the over-the-top ones, like the ones where you summon a creature that blows up hat the planet literally every single time. This is not that. This attack is about as small as these kinds of attacks can go, but while it's not incredibly flashy, it is incredibly dumb. Uh, the character Renoa's limit breaks all revolve around her dog, Angelo. On top of being a very good boy, apparently the dog also makes some excellent ammunition. For her first level limit break, Renoa pulls out this move called the Angelo Cannon, where she somehow attaches her dog to her little wrist crossbow and fires at enemies. Yeah, this also creates a big explosion for some reason. And no, the dog is not hurt by this. Just the image of a dog strapped to a gun is enough to make this one of the all-time dumbest moves. I mean, seriously, look at what are, look what we're looking at. It's a dog in a gun. In a gun. I don't actually know exactly how to describe this, but on the other hand, the idea of launching your dog at an enemy is cool in its own way, even if it's pretty goofy to say the very least. And finally at number one, from the Tekken series, The Fatal Wind. In the Tekken games, one of Kuma's signature moves is this one, where they bend over and, yes, fart. It's incredibly slow and easily countered, and the range on it is short. So short, in fact, that your opponent literally has to be walking into you for it to work, but if it hits, it's an instant KO, guaranteed. That's what makes it cool. It's crazy powerful and can end a match, but the actual animation is extremely goofy and awkward. Probably the most hilarious form of this attack can be found in Street Fighter vs. Tekken. Uh, it's not an instant KO there, but the animation is hilarious and I mean the faces some of these guys make after getting farted on completely amazing I mean it's a fart attack that automatically uh, that's dumb that's just dumb you don't get a get around that you don't make a fart attack and go well that was the sensible and dramatic version no but Kuma manages to stay out of the Bowery Cho zone because its fart attack is also incredibly deadly silent not so much ah, right ah. it's unlikely you'll actually hit anyone with it but it is amazing when you do and that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.